the nation's number one quarterback has revealed his final four. And we got to talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, we need to talk about Tony Grimes, the number one cornerback in the 2021 class who announced the final four schools he is considering ahead of what is expected to be a decision on December 1 about where he is going to play college football. Now, a couple of things in there. One, Grimes' comp in the NFL is Kyle Fuller. And anybody who watched Kyle Fuller play for the Bears and watched him in college will tell you one of the great slot corners right in recent history up there with Chris Harris and others and Minka Fitzpatrick I, I would I nominate him as a slot corner and Grimes I love his well size for one but also his ability to play within the concepts that he's asked to and that's one of the things that he is interested in when looking at schools right so the things that he mentioned about the four schools that he is considering which include Georgia Ohio State North Carolina and Texas A&M all have to do with coaching staff and he made a point of talking through Charlton Warren and Kirby Smart and what they teach, the principles that they want their corners and safeties to play with, but also that Kirby Smart is hands-on with the defensive backs, and he's been that way from jump. A former safety at the University of Georgia and defensive coordinator, lifer on that side of the ball, he takes a tremendous amount of pride in coaching the safeties and defensive backs, and they have had two Thorpe Award finalists in the past two years, including the 2018 winner, DeAndre Baker, who was the first to win the Jim Thorpe Award at the University of Georgia. I think that Kirby Smart in his record as a recruiter can't be counted out here. I understand that North Carolina is the favorite right now, and I'm going to get into that. But the way that Kirby Smart has been recruiting at a high level, the way that he has convinced quarterbacks, which is the premium position, to join each other in competition in his quarterback room with JT Daniels, Jamie Newman joining Carson Beck and Dwan Mathis, Stetson Bennett cannot be overlooked along with Brock Vandegrift in this 2021 class. And that would mean that he could have the nation's number two quarterback and number one cornerback in this class. And they're only about nine deep in their well, building of their 21 class. And they're chomping right along at like a 90 point, 94 point whatever rating of just they could finish at number two if they get a Grimes character and if they add another guy like Casey for or Casey Corey Foreman to the fold along with Mason Smith you're talking about challenging for well closing the gap with Ohio State but I still think that Ohio State right now is going to be the winner for the 2021 recruiting national championship next on the list of course North Carolina he mentioned Mac Brown as being the only active head coach in the College Football Hall of Fame, which is a very big deal to many. But Dre Bly, being the cornerback's coach there, I think is the real sell here. Bly was an outstanding NFL cornerback and has done nothing but recruit at a high level, especially after coming back to his alma mater where he was an All-American twice over and helped develop Stephon Gilmore into the kind of player that he has become, which is the best defensive player in the 2019 season last year. I don't think that one's up for debate. Certainly the best player on that New England Patriots team not named Tom Brady. I also like that he mentioned Ohio State here with Kerry Coombs, right? Because uh, Kerry Coombs has been absolutely outstanding when it comes to not just recruiting defensive back talent, but developing it. Because you've heard me say it in this space over and over again, nobody's been better at putting defense backs into the NFL, particularly in the first round, than the Ohio State University over the past four years. We're talking about something like 17 or seven defensive backs drafted in the first round and two in the 2020 NFL draft with Damon Arnett and Jeff Okuda. We all expect Sean Wade to join them next year as another first round draft pick. Perhaps Josh Proctor comes on a little bit more. Also, we know about the overdevelopment of Denzel Ward, who came to Ohio State as a three star recruit and left as the fourth pick in the 2018 NFL draft. The way that Ohio State has been recruiting at a monster level, you cannot count them out of this race either. I'm expecting to hear that it gets narrower as the season gets down, but if he can take visits to all four places, I think that Ohio State stands a chance, especially knowing that they're probably going to be in the running for the national championship this season, 
along with Georgia. Can't say that about North Carolina. They got to get past Clemson first. And even then, I'm not certain that they're going to be able to do much more if they manage to get by Clemson in an ACC championship game. Then there's Texas A&M, which I find to be the dark horse here because Texas A&M does not really have the pedigree to show that they can put him into the NFL. No first round draft picks this year. And you got to go to Miles Garrett the last time that they had a guy that was absolutely positively uh, untouchable on defense when we're talking about from a development and NFL prospect standpoint. But he cited that he loved Jimbo Fisher's staff and he likes the alumni network along with other things. He mentioned JT, or excuse me, TJ Rushing as one of the gifted young defensive backs uh, coaches in all of college football. And I understand what the alumni base uh, appeal is because that's one of the things I talk to most kids about when they consider A&M. They're like, look, the, the Aggie network is you know undefeated when it comes to trying to get you good jobs and good opportunities. Also add in there, North Carolina is a top 10 business school and Texas A&M is great at developing business people. No, just look at the oil industry for that. So I'm, I'm interested to see what he decides to do and where his visits land. He's the seven, number seven prospect in the 247 sports composite, so a top 10 player there. And we're going to all watch him very closely for what he decides to do when it comes to taking visits. If you can take visits, which is, again, on the, not on the table presently because we've seen the ex, uh, recruiting dead period extended to July 31st. And we don't even know if normal recruiting you know, rules are going to apply for the season because I have a sneaking suspicion that one, the early signing day might get nixed or early signing period. And two, that kids might not be able to take the visits that they want to take during the season. Maybe as you get closer to the end of the season, that changes. But specifically for a kid like Tony Grimes, I think it's going to be very important coming out of Virginia Beach, which is also where Dre Bly is from. Another reason why people are high on him going to North Carolina, but also coming out of Princess Anne where they've been pretty decent. He's been pretty doggone good, if I don't say so myself. Um, Last thing that I wanted to mention about his Final Four list is I was really amazed to see that that Texas A&M was able to make this much headway, right? North Carolina, I get. Georgia, I get. Ohio State, we get. But Texas A&M still being here with this kiddo still having his commitment six months away, December one then you have to really, really think about what they might be able to do and how they might be able to appeal to him in the future. All right, that is it for me. Deuces.